I think.
right now. No, we have to kill him. Eight minutes to jump. I have to protect you. I understand. You have to make the jump from the air. Greenwood, I'm taking Santa by for one. This is Colonel Forrester. Have a working toxin. I only have two. We're all on essentials. Everybody else, Hoxton has got to go back on the next jump. Seven minutes. This is Forrester. Spike stop site, Colonel. Watch your six. Shaking. You don't have to babysit me. This is the one thing. For... 
everything. <laughs> Time travel has always been a very interesting concept. The ability to traverse through the passage of time to go forward, future, and backwards, past, through its flow and encountering events that or will happen or alter in sequences to effectively change history is something that stuff on dreamers or flights of fancy. This concept idea has manifested itself into numerous avenues with some being prime narrative construct for the usage of storytelling through various mediums, TV, film, video games, novels, etc. In the case of movies, time travel, while the idea has been floated around into various genre realms, producing features that capitalize on the importance of traveling through time in a way to help James slash defend the particular time era with the consequences of doing so. These include films like 1989 single quote S. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, 1985's to 1990's Back to the Future Trilogy, 1994 single quote S. Time Cope, the 1984 to 2019 Terminator franchise. The series plot is based around the concept, 2002 single quote S. The Time Machine, 2009 single quote S. The Time Traveler's Wife, 2012 single quote S. Looper. 2019 single quote S Avengers, in game as well as many others. Now, Amazon Prime Video as well as Paramount Picture Studios and director Chris McKay present the latest time travel movie with the release of The Tomorrow War. Does this film jump into the future the right way with pure blockbuster entertainment, or is it a choppy endeavor that's all wibbly wobbly, timey wimey? The story of the year is 2022 and Dan Forrester, Chris Pratt, is an ex-military man teaching high school biology, trying to make sense of his life. He's a husband to wife Emmy, Betty Gilpin, and father to young Maury, Ryan Kieran Armstrong, living in a quaint suburban lifestyle, keeping his distance away from his estranged father, James J.K. Simmons. One day, soldiers from the year 2051 arrive presenting the inhabitants of Earth with a warning that the world is on the verge of being overrun by unknown creatures called White Spikes, and that their future is doomed. To help prevent this coming disaster, a draft is instituted, with the selected and planted with an armband helping to link them to their time, sent into the future to battle hostile creature invaders of 2051. Of those individuals selected, Dan is one of them to make the jump into the future, making a friend and fellow scientist Charlie Sam Richardson, while finding survival tips from future war vet Dorian Edwin Hodge. Arriving in Miami 2051 during a major battle, Dan quickly finds his place in the brutal war, connecting with Commander Forrester Ivan Strahersky, who's working on a special toxin that's capable of decimating the White Spikes populace once and for all. However, Dan's situation becomes more involved than he can ever imagine. The good slash the bad just like what Hulk says in Avengers, and game. Time travel. Yes, I do love a good time travel narrative, especially how a person or group travels up or down the stream of time to visit slash James sequence of events. For better or worse, which can cause alternative realities to form or the whole butterfly effect. Yes. I'll admit that I am a bit of nerd when it comes to this type of stuff, so I enjoy that. As I said, the concept of time travel has been quite a useful narrative mechanic for a multitude of narratives out there, with some being better than others and slasher more throughout. Within the video game realm, I would say that Chrono Cross and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time are some prime examples, while shows like Doctor Who and Outlander cater to some great examples found in the TV venue. Within the cinematic realm, the concept of time travel is there and, as I said, can be dealt with in a good manner, but if those mechanics are further explained, followed, or presented within a solid narrative, perhaps the best example, at least to me, is the example would either have to derive from the Terminator franchise or the Back to the Future trilogy, both of which cater to the time travel concept and create their own governing laws of which the movie's story follows through on. 
Overall, the idea of time traveling is a good one and I think Hollywood and several other mediums have found it surreal and a fictitious idea that may something of a proven plot device mechanic for narratives to follow. That brings me back around to talking about The Tomorrow War, a 2021 sci-fi action feature film. To be honest, I really didn't hear much about this movie until a month or two prior to its release. I think I did hear vague notion of actor Chris Pratt playing a lead role in an upcoming sci-fi movie, but that was pretty much it. Heck, even the film's trailers weren't released until somewhat close to when the movie was set to be released. There just wasn't a whole lot of buzz for the movie, so it kind of went under my radar. I think I kept hearing more about it on Instagram as I do follow Pratt on there and he was heavily promoting the upcoming film constantly. So, naturally, I decided to check out the film's trailer and I do have to say that I was somewhat intrigued by it. I wasn't completely blown away by it, but it definitely held my curiosity to actually see the movie with its sci-fi concept, futuristic time travel, and with Chris Pratt in the main role. It certainly had the makings of a sci-fi blockbuster and was on the verge of being released theatrically, with an original scheduled date set for December 25, 2020, Christmas Day 2020, by Paramount Pictures. However, due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the movie was delayed. Shuffled to July 23, 2021. After that, Amazon bought the distribution rights to the movie from Paramount with the Tomorrow War finally settling on July 2, 2021, on Amazon Prime Video, switching the film from being released theatrically to a streaming. I do remember when the movie initially came out and I did watch the film a week after its release. However, due to my busy work schedule, I kept on pushing doing my review for the movie. Now, I finally have some free time to share my thoughts on this film. Is it worth seeing? Well, not really. Despite having an interesting concept and some blockbuster flair to its action, The Tomorrow War never truly comes into its own, wallowing as a generic, midland sci-fi endeavor that feels predictable and formulaic in almost all aspects. Like one character says in the movie we are literally on borrowed time and the film is simply that. On borrowed time. The Tomorrow War is directed by Chris McKay, whose previous directorial works include several TV shows like Moral or Titan Maximum, and Robot Chicken as well as the feature animated film The Lego Batman Movie. Given his attraction to more slapstick and comedic endeavors, it does seem like an odd choice that McKay would want to do a project like The Tomorrow War, which is more of a sci-fi action feature. Regardless of that decision he is the director, and I do think that the movie does have some good redeeming qualities that the director chooses to make. Perhaps the most interesting one is that overall concept of the film's story, with McKay staging the opening 25 minutes in a very interesting way, presenting the narrative of the film's plot with its soldiers from the future idea and the war that is to come. The time travel aspect is kind of unique and it definitely pulled me into the movie's first act as well as the film's main antagonist threat of the White Spikes, which are more creature-like than generic alien-esque foes from sci-fi. In addition, McKay creates a morality and purpose also found at this particular point of the story shown in the feature's main character of Dan Forrester, which does make for a compelling character arcade where the movie actually truly shines the best and where McKay's direction proves to be the most effective is in the first really big action sequences towards the end of the first act. Or is it the beginning of the second act? I can't remember exactly. Anyway. This particular scene is executed quite well and delivers the right number of thrills, suspense, action, and visuals that anyone could ask for. I think McKay truly did nails this part beautifully. There are some other effective action sequences that McKay does stage throughout the movie, which does offer some good sci-fi action bits here and there, but nothing is compared to this particular scene. Overall, I do have to give some credit towards McKay for what he was able to accomplish with this movie. For better or worse, push. For its presentation, The Tomorrow War is decent enough and has its moments where the movie shines. That being said, the movie is somewhat stuck between blockbuster film endeavor and a TV movie look, which is a bit strange as the project has a production budget $200 million. As a whole, the movie itself looks fine and showcases plenty of large scale sequences that is fit in a sci fi action endeavor. However, I think the blowered production budget doesn't exactly match what's presented on screen. 
Sure, stuff looks slick, clean, and well detailed, but not so much to warrant such a hefty price tag. I just can't see it. It just doesn't push that cinematic envelope to make such a large spending as well as that large-scale blockbuster feeling. Still, regardless of that fact, the Tomorrow War looks well done and it's clear that attention to detail is well represented, especially during some of the action set pieces. Thus, the features behind the scenes team, including Peter Winham, production design and Beauchamp set decorations for making the film's set and slash scenery looks appealing. Be a worn torn city or a futuristic lab cinematography efforts by Larry Fong are also effective in the film. Nothing to complete wow over, but Fong's technique for cinematic certainly suffices for a few pocket moments of brilliance here and there. The same can be said for the film's visual effects, which do lend a hand for some of the more action sequences. Again, it's nothing per se new and breaking new ground in this particular field, but it gets the job done and doesn't have pull effect blemishes. Heck, I do have to say that I was pretty intrigued over the design and rendering of the White Spikes. Lastly, the film's score, which was composed by Lauren Balfe, is perhaps one of the better aspects in the Tomorrow War's technical presentation. Finding the soundtrack disturbing and compelling during its quieter moments and very dramatic and bombastic within its lighter, action-packed sequences. While it's not one of my favorite Balfe scores produced, it is definitely a solid musical composition. And I do appreciate it. Unfortunately, the Tomorrow War isn't all what it cracks up to be and ends up being more of Midland Endeavor rather than the true blockbuster popcorn feature. Perhaps the best way to sum up the feature is that it is, more or less, an unremarkable endeavor that plays up the standard tropes of the large-scale sci-fi narrative. As a whole, the movie itself doesn't quite feel as powerfully impactful as a cinematic feature film. I know that's hard to say, but let me try to explain. The story of the Tomorrow War is sort of good, with a very strong start within its premise as mentioned above, but then after the beginning of the second act, the film starts to slow down and becomes somewhat generic and basically loses steam within its own story plot, which is gravely disappointing. In addition, the movie's narrative gets bogged down with classic stereotypes of sci-fi gallery and hand-wavy dialogue explanations of how things are happening. The result is something a bit muddy and clunky, with the feature story ending more on a whimper than Razmataz Bang. Plot points are overshadowed and left dangling, some ideas never are truly panned out correctly, twists are left moot and predictable, and the list goes on and on. True enough, tropes and cliches can be overlooked within a movie's story, but everything else about the project needs to stand out, setting, characters, action, visuals, etc. Unfortunately, the Tomorrow War doesn't and languishes within mediocrity. There's a lot of potential that the film's story has, but none of it comes to fruition and instead chooses for something rather bland and redundant nuances that hinder the plot of the film rather than strengthen it. In conjunction with this idea, the film's script is rather flat and thinly sketched out. Penned by Zach Dean, the feature script, like I mentioned, starts out strong with a clever futuristic sci-fi concept but begins to falter slowly and ends up being woefully bland by the time the film reaches its climax. This goes back to the film being generic as I will continue to mention that because that's what the Tomorrow War ultimately begins being, a generic sci-fi movie. Dean's script feels quite lazy and plays upon the commonly used sci-fi tropes for the feature's main concept points, including story-built moments, character developments, and overall action stage and sequences. The culmination of this ends up making the film rather flimsy, especially in the second half of the feature, roughly around 15 minutes into the movie, with the back half of the Tomorrow War playing out in a very formulaic and predictable way. What doesn't help this concept is the actual dialogue written for the movie. Finding many of the character dialogue built moments slash lines to be too wooden sounding, too broad, and a tad corny. Heck, even some of the film's speech moments, which are supposed to be impactful, come off as mostly campy. Of course, I was not expecting a sharp and Oscar-worthy script slash dialogue, but I was expecting that was better handled and more snappy instead of something that seems like a throwaway TV movie on the Sci-Fi channel. What also aids in this criticism is the overall direction handling by McKay. While I did mention several of the positives a few paragraphs, the long and short of it is that McKay makes the feature rather clunky in large portion. 
finding the Tomorrow War feeling more like a TV movie rather than theatrical feature film. There's just something about the film that never feels quite right, with McKay's handling of the project feeling like a days ago with not enough punch or finesse. From start to finish, the movie feels at a lower scale endeavor, and I find it hard to believe that the film is going to have a theatrical release. In truth, this basically does feel like a movie for the streaming service, which can be a good and bad thing. For me, it's kind of a bad thing. Besides one particular scene where Dan and company first jump into the future, the rest of the movie falls flat and predictable, with McKay never making the feature truly stand out. In addition, McKay shapes the movie with some odd pacing, which, again, is shown in the latter half of the feature. In truth, that particular portion of the feature is rather mundane and sort of loose esteem, propelling events forward in a very vanilla sci-fi manner with no really um to project. Also, the movie's tone is off at particular moments, with some parts being really serious and grim, while other parts showcase comedic relief. It's really strange and weird, and doesn't really mesh well with everything, generating a somewhat off-putting tone for the movie that never comes together. Perhaps the project was too overwhelming for him or maybe there were too many restrictions from the studio. Whatever the case, McKay needs a better handling on the movie and the final results clearly shows that. The cast in The Tomorrow War is a bit of a mixed bag, which does have a bit of a fair amount of recognizable acts and talents attached to the project. However, most of them give rather broad character moments that come across as either generic to the genre or thinly sketched. Headline in the movie is, of course, actor Chris Pratt in the protagonist character role of Dan Forrester. Pratt, known for his roles in the MCU movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, and Avengers, Infinity War, as well as other projects like Parks and Recreation, The Lego Movie, and Magnificent Seven, has always been a very charismatic and well-liked actor, which comes through the various character roles he's played in his career. Slowly moving forward, recently from a supporting player to a leading man, The Tomorrow War is one of those movies that is helmed and designed for the lead character and Pratt seems to relish in that opportunity, capable of seizing the moment whenever he is on screen with the necessary star power and gravitas. However, Pratt's charismatic bravado, something that he's known to play in his characters, isn't present in The Tomorrow War, with actor playing a more stoic character that never really feels memorable. In truth, the Dan acts more of a generic action lead character, which is equipped with the standard family issues and tactical maneuvers. Nothing about the character stands out and Pratt's performance clearly shows that. Going through the motions with little to no pizzazz, in short, from all the various known characters he's played in his career. From Andy Dwyer, Peter Quill, Emmett Braskovsky, Owen Grady, Jim Preston, and Josh Faraday, Pratt's Dan Forrester in The Tomorrow War is perhaps his weakest and most unmemorable character. And that's a crying shame. Bull character. Behind Pratt, the other supporting character in the movie, who is the most screen time, would be the character of Colonel Forrester, a tough and seasoned military veteran character from the future who has close ties to the character of Dan Forrester and who was played by actress Yvonne Strahovski. Personally, I do like Strahovski, who is known for her roles in Dexter, The Handmaid's Tale, and The Predator. I think she's a good actor and is capable of handling herself whenever on screen. Heck. My personally favorite role from her was Miranda Lawson from the Mass Effect trilogy video game series. That being said, while I think that she was good in the movie, the character development for her character is rather clunky and mismanaged. It's clear where the script and direction is going for with her character, but, much like the film itself, is delivered in the bland and derivative way. Strahovski does her best with what she's been given, but she can't elevate such a flimsy character. Thus, despite her attempts, Colonel Forrester comes off his stock like sci-fi character that feels wooden and predictable. The sad part is that the rest of the cast are just as bland and woefully underdeveloped. 
This includes actor J.K. Simmons, Will Plash and Juno, his dance and strange father James Forrester, actress Betty Gilpin, the hunt and isn't it romantic, his dance wife Emma Forrester, young actress Ryan Keir Armstrong, American Horror Story and the Glorious, his dance young daughter Maury Forrester, actor Sam Richardson, Mike and Dave need wedding dates and office Christmas party, his fellow draftee soldier friend to Dan named Charlie, and actor Edwin Hodge, The Purge, election year and minds me, the season soldier Dorian. All of these acts and talents are genuinely good and have done solid work in their past endeavors. However, most of their involvement in the Tomorrow War is, more or less, generic and broken down into several archetype characteristics, that is, concerned wife, distant father, sweet daughter, goofy sidekick, and gruff soldier. Thus, these characters are simply cookie-cutter constructs and don't exactly quite land properly. Feelings are shallow, two-tonal wrong for the picture, too formulaic, or just simply not enough. And that's disappointing. Rounding out the rest of the cast are actor Keith Powers, before I fall and straight out of Compton is Major Greenwood, actress Mary Lynn Rice Cube, 24 in night school is Nora, actor Mike Mitchell, Parks and Recreation and the Birthday Boys is Cowan, actor Jared Shaw, The Warfighters and The Terminalist is Tank, actress Alexis Leiter, Watchmen and the Originals as Diablo, and Rose Bianco, Cobra Kai and Project Power as Rose. These particular characters are, more or less, minor supporting players in the film and kind of fill that role. Nothing of them truly stand out much, character-wise, I mean, but, again, they're minor supporting characters. Respect and background stock characters and that's all. That being said, most of them are somewhat generic and portrayed in very broad strokes, which, to me at least, is a bit problematic to a certain degree. Final thoughts trying to find his purpose in his current wayward life, Dan Forstner finds opportunity in a futuristic war to save the world in the movie The Tomorrow War. Director Chris McKay's latest film takes the whole time travel and premise and puts a new spin on it, delving into a sci-fi blockbuster endeavor of intense action and broad sentimentality within its main character. While the concept for the narrative is quite interesting and some nuances definitely work, the movie fails to deliver, especially within its choppy second half, derived execution, familiar story beats, awkward comedy, blind characters, and a weak performance from its lead. Personally, I thought that this movie was disappointing. It definitely had a few moments and an interesting concept, but the overall execution of it all felt lackadaisical and unsatisfying. Plus, as I mentioned, this was probably one of Pratt's weakest character roles. Thus, my recommendation for this movie is a favorable skip, as the movie doesn't offer a whole lot of entertainment value. Well, maybe a little, with better offering for sci-fi action cinematics found elsewhere. Well, there's talks of a sequel being in the works. I'm very skeptical about its development and what exactly the second chapter will be about. No, the Tomorrow War is a misguided endeavor. Promise it would see action blockbuster flare with its opening that ultimately fizzles out by the reaches its end. This is one project that is rather bland and forgetful. And that's disappointing. And forget.